Where is he? Have you seen Brian? I don't know. I haven't seen him. <laughs> Brian! Brian, come up in the studio now! We need you, Brian. Where is he? Crap. Go, go. Oh, out of the way, hippie! Oh, come on. Brian! Brian, come up in the studio now! We need you now! Where is he? He's always doing this. Part of it. I don't know where he is. Hey, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. He's supposed to be at... What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Byte, the place to be for all things good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now let's jump into the show, starting off with Siri. It's really become a household name for voice recognition, thanks to Apple's mass appeal, even if some of you aren't really using it. Now Android has had voice recognition before iOS, but it now trails behind Siri's more natural interaction. The Android Me blog reports that Google is now working on a Siri competitor called Majel. It's named after the wife of Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry, and she was the voice for many of the computer interfaces in the series. Direction unclear. Please repeat request. It's being developed by Google's Google X Experiment Labs, and their ultimate goal is to make every piece of computing experience voice aware. It's always good to see more competition, and we're really expecting a big push with voice recognition in 2012. And in other rumors, Clippy will be the voice assistant in Windows Phone 7. In MacBook Pro rumors, Digitimes reports that the Big A may be readying an ultra-high resolution display for as early as the second quarter. According to their sources, it would be a double res display at 2880 by 1800 pixels, which would presumably be for the 15 inch model. Now, Apple has already added support for high DPI modes in Lion that support this resolution doubling mode, and ultra high resolution artwork for desktops and icons have been found in OS X, so we can expect to probably see this. Now, the latest developer build of iOS 5.1 Beta 2 was released and finally includes the option to delete pictures from your photo stream instead of automatically pushing every single thing you take a picture of, including those awkward MySpace photos. But there was also more evidence pointing to the next iPad 3 found in the code, but no evidence of the iPhone 5 yet. Now, Digitime's most recent iPad report claims next-gen iPad parts have been delivered to manufacturers and the iPad 3 or whatever it ends up being called will be available in three to four months. And that's just enough time to enjoy your new iPad 2 from Christmas. All right, let's check out the app of the week. There were so many to choose from this week, from the updated Netflix app with its smooth interface that looks great, but come on, I've been there, I've done that. Or check out the open world Grand Theft Auto 3 that finally brings us back to Liberty City on iOS. But let's get real, the app that I wanna show you is Connectimals. It's Microsoft's popular Connect game and first entry on iOS where you get to pick your favorite big cat. I'll pick a lion. And then you can teach it these really cool tricks you can make them all nice and clean with this scrubber. You can play jump rope and, and see how he hops over. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> or just pet him because he loves you. It's $2.99 and it's a universal app that's perfect for the kids and it looks so good that it feels like the game pops out of the screen. <laughs> Bad lion! Bad lion! I told you not to do that, buddy. All right, back to stories. Google has released their Zeitgeist list for 2011 that ranks the most popular searches of 2011. At number one, everyone's favorite singer, Rebecca Black. It's Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. Or not. But the top Apple search came in at number six for the iPhone 5, a product that doesn't even exist. Now, Steve Jobs was ninth and the iPad 2 came in at 10th, making three of the top 10 Apple related. It also looks like new improvements might be coming to Apple's notification center after a few new hires suggest Apple is looking to push the feature even further. Most notable was Jan Michael Cart, the University of Georgia student who was hired as a paid intern for the next seven months. Thanks to his mock-up videos showing improvements, Apple should implement like the status bar showing the number of notifications, third-party widgets that we all want, and collapsible notification lists. And while they're at it, can you guys fix the horrible, jacked up, bad Apple Music player that they brought to the iPad in iOS 5? It's a mess. All right, to so the quick bites, there's some software updates that you can take care of. iTunes 10.5.2 makes improvements they aren't telling us to iTunes match service, and an audio distortion problem in CDs gets a fix. Plus, the Apple TV and iOS 5 get minor updates if you want to do that. 
And unfortunately, my bid wasn't high enough. Apple's founding contract sold for $1.6 million at the Sotheby's auction recently in New York to the CEO of the Cisneros Corporation. It's a nice profit for a few pieces of paper. And check this out, if you're looking for a stocking stuffer, this could be it. It's the Mirrorbook Air, that's a compact mirror designed to look like a MacBook Air. It's 1995 euros, but I really don't know any guy that would want that. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's show. From all of us here on the Apple Byte team, enjoy your holidays with your friends, your family, and uh, even your iPad. Email us at theapplebyte.cnet.com. I'm Brian Tong, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time for another bite of the Apple! Oh, God! <laughs>